Have you ever heard of a smart contract platform Chromia? Well, I haven't. Not until a few weeks ago when I started researching it. In the upcoming 15 minutes, you're going to see the result of my work where I will talk about the team, the relational databases, the Chromia's white paper, the native token Chroma, and plus we will have a look at the community. You can always like and subscribe to support the channel. And now let's have a look at the review itself. What is Chromia? Chromia is a third generation EVM compatible layer one that puts its chain of transactions inside a relational database while adding voting and consensus. Moreover, Chromia also functions as a layer 2 enhancement for Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. Chromia invented its own programming language called RHEL, which is designed like SQL and it's extremely easy to use. Chromia is a network of interconnected blockchains because each dApp operates on a blockchain of its own. This system is way more flexible than sharding, as each blockchain may have its own set of rules. Let's now dive into the deep research of Chromia, beginning with a team. Chromia is being built by Chroma Way, Swedish startup founded by three people. Henrik Hjelte, Or Perelman and Alex Mizrahi. Now let's talk about all three of them in detail. Henrik is CEO in Chromaway. He's an experienced consultant and manager. Starting as early as 1988 on a powerful 386 processor in Turbo Pascal. <laughs> He founded many startups throughout his career. Do you know that actually I, I actually worked with a dating startup? He undoubtedly possesses the business qualities of a good CEO. And that's something that Chromia has that no one else has. It's basically that it's based on a database technology the same technology that is used in enterprises. Alex is CTO. He has impressive developer background of over 20 years, while he's two founded few startups like we-tac.info or famous coloredcoins.org. I dug up this interview from 2019 where Alex talks about nodes compensation. Each DAP has its own blockchain, which is costed on a number of nodes and uh, DAP pays for uh, basically compensate the nodes for resources it consumes. Or Perlman is COO in Chromaway. He founded Savebit in 2011 and Colored Coins in 2012. I co-founded very early wallet Uh, which was called SafeBit, which had a few dozen of users back in the day. Stefan Thomas, up until recently as well, was a, a part of Ripple CTO, was part of uh, our team. Uh, so we had a very good team then. He isn't a developer, but he has three plus years of marketing experience, and I think he should do more marketing around Chromia too. We are the guys that created the first token platform in the world. Extremely interesting is the team's work on colored coins back in 2013. Colored Coins makes trading as user-friendly and efficient as a Bitcoin payment. When Ethereum was merely in planning phase. I think that the Bitcoin community didn't understand much about tokens or why they would be useful. Uh, I remember going to some kind of meetups and talking about the tokens and NFTs in 2013. No one understood what it was about. So I didn't, didn't say that people got really angry when we moved away from Bitcoin. Basically, yeah, people didn't care that much. Should the community be less ignorant back in 2013, Bitcoin could have been as well Ethereum. Last but not least, all three co-founders appear very obscurely on YouTube or other video platforms, which I think is not the best news. We've already used the term relational databases quite a few times, so let's have a look at them in depth. Uh, so of course we are combining blockchain with relational database and you know becomes relational blockchain. Relational databases are an old concept of how to structure the information. The data is stored in linked quote unquote relations that we essentially know as tables. That's where the name relational comes from. Similar to Excel, there are entries in rows and columns and they have unique identifier. 
SQL, it's another term used in these reviews. It stands for Structured Query Language, and it's the primary language used to manage the relational database. SQL is larger than Java, larger than C++, larger than Python, larger than PHP. This is like technology that's really used in the real world. Why is it a good idea for Chromia to build on the concept of relational databases? Look at the mainstream programmer, the survey I mentioned from Stack Overflow, that they don't use Solidity, but they do use databases for good reasons. So we have this untapped potential of, of new projects and new people that might be attracted to, to our blockchain. Such untapped potential is only one of many arguments for the databases. Here are some technical ones, for instance. Uh, so on Chromopolis, you can make this more powerful transactions, which uh, update all accounts, even if you have like million accounts. And uh, also, in, let's say in game world, uh, you can update like all units in, in this game world to basically update the state and you want to do this periodically. So great for blockchain based games. How about, for instance, exchange on Chromia? Think about an exchange order matching, things like that. It's perfect for uh, these kind of use cases. Are the relational databases used widely today or used at all? Basically, everywhere you look in an enterprise, if you look at the core banking applications, if it's not on COBOL or, or stuff from the 60s, then it's on a relational database. Uh, this is basically technology that is very grounded in what enterprises really have been using for the last 30 years. 40 years. Naturally, they discussed the databases in the white paper too. Let's have a look at other important points that are inside it. The paper goes into detail about Chromia, yet I was disappointed not to find a section explaining how Chromia functions as layer 2 enhancement for Ethereum. Let's now start explaining the key features of Chromia. Relational model is that the blockchain data and application states are stored in a relational database which brings tons of advantages such as rich indexing and querying. The relational language rel increases programmer productivity. Chromia is horizontally scaled which means that each DAB has its own blockchain and thus the total throughput can be increased by increasing the total number of the nodes. Rich indexing means that the dApps can retrieve needed information directly from nodes that are running the application. Chromia's unique PBFT style consensus is designed from first principles and we will surely talk about it a few slides later. Then there is a talk about first class dApps, which means that the dApps are considered first class entities, giving developers tons of flexibility and control. Node providers replace the miners from traditional proof-of-work blockchains and ensure that in case of colluding of major mining pools, they won't be able to exert control over the network. Team has decided to design their own consensus from first principles. The Chromia software runs on nodes, which are physical or virtual instances of computing power. Users connect to these nodes to post transactions, to query data or synchronize their private replicas. The dApps run on multiple nodes and of course it's crucial that these nodes belong to different non-colluding providers. Additionally, there is an extra layer of security on Chromia, which is anchoring the entirety of Chromia in major proof-of-work blockchain like Bitcoin every few blocks. Let's briefly talk about the use cases. Chromia is ideal for a blockchain-based MMORPGs, but also Chromia is, uh, is suitable for business use cases, particularly applications connected to transparency. Uh, on Chromia, it's the providers that have the government's votes and its 66% majority is needed for approval. Initially, Chromia will have centralized governance by Chrome Away. Also, since each application operates on its own blockchain, different dApps may have different governance or no governance at all. 
And there is still so much more interesting written in the paper, yet I have so little time, but I did my best to bring you all the key points. And now let's talk about the token CHR. The token Chroma CHR is used to compensate block producing nodes and to pay transaction fees. As a difference from the other networks, it's the dApps that pay those fees on Chromia, not the users. Chromia isn't proof of stake, yet staking is present to make sure the providers have stake in the ecosystem. The token release schedule is very clear on their website, showing that the most aggressive unlock happened in 2020 and for the upcoming two years it will continue happening mildly. There is also a burning implemented with some portion of the tokens intended for deletion to be sent to charities. As CoinGecko shows, the current market cap is about 110 million. Let's briefly see uh, about the price action of the token. And I always give you two areas which are not a financial advice, it's just my personal opinion. Excellent buy area would be around 7.5 cents. It's actually a level which was untested ever since we left that, that level in March. And also is the top of the little DeFi summer of 2020. As for the sell area, as you can see, there is quite a lot of space left. And on daily, we actually see quite few uh, closes of the red candles and also closes of the green candles uh, at the borders of my red area. So that's why I would give uh, somewhere around $1.2 the area where I think lots of people might take profits. The next chapter is the community chapter, so stay tuned in. Yet again, I actively collaborated with the community to polish the review. It improves the quality and also allows me to research the community itself. I was surprised to learn that Chromia doesn't have official Discord channel. It's the first project I have reviewed without one. I was also puzzled to find out that the posting on the Reddit is permission only. I immediately applied for the permission to share with the community, but nobody got back to me. I did get some feedback, although due to the lack of Discord and Reddit, it was less than I usually get. Pleasant surprise, however, was an unexpected message from Alex Mizrahi, who watched the beginning of my draft. Sincere thanks, the feedback was immediately incorporated. Chromia Developers is Chromia's YouTube channel where they make for instance, this cool typography explainer video. Overall, Chromia's community feels fundamentally based and active, but sadly seems to lack some infrastructure. With that being said, let's now have a few words to my criticism. I have reviewed lots of extremely promising projects that are not generally known about, like Radix, Alliance Block and Luxo. Chromia seems to be one of them. It's a good question, how to market it. We can talk, etc. but we, I, I guess that we need to show more like working products. There is a short book from Jeremy Epstein called Dandelion Marketing. The Dandelion only needs one seed to take root for it to multiply, yet it can make thousands of them. And also marketing effort just needs one viral video, but it may need to make thousands of these videos for one to go viral. One quote from the book says, if you truly want innovators, you must have culture that allows them to experiment and fail without being punished for it. Everyone wants to have better marketing, so do I, but specifically, what can we do? If you have ideas for that, it would be interesting. Chromaway could offer modest thousand euros for low budget original videos that would tell a story about Chromia that then people want to tell their friends about. So that's who you choose instead of me. He's not worth any of your money or your time. All my friends go out with him and they said he was a blast. <laughs> I just couldn't resist the temptation. Please forgive me. With a budget of 100,000 euros, hundreds of such videos could be made. 
And if just one goes viral, the public awareness of Chromia increases manifold. Let me get this straight. Veteran, battle-hardened team not being given a space with Bitcoin community in 2013, now coming back to finish what they've started, but on a way more advanced level. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Why haven't I ever heard about this project before? Developers, they will understand it once they see the productivity gains and the ease of use. Developers, they like to switch when they find some more, something more productive.